Um, my talk will be on AI ethics and how it can be more than a lip service. So um, we're really in the gutter now, in the sense that we know that um, AI and data-driven practices are increasingly shaping and changing our society. So um, it shouldn't come as a surprise that this same society wants these AI actors or AI professionals to take responsibility for these impacts, the impact they have with their applications. And with taking responsibility, um, we mean more than um, merely being compliant with the law. Obviously, uh, you need to be, we want our innovations to be compliant with the law. But sometimes this, um, this law uh, lags behind or um, the technology goes too fast, depending uh, on your take. And um, we need more guidance. Uh, and next to that, um, because the impact of uh, AI can be so uh, fundamental, we also want our AI actors and professionals um, to have more to exceed uh, a checkbox mentality. I mean, we really want that uh, AI is being developed in a way that it um, um, reflects the societal values that we uphold in our democratic society. And that there is reason for, uh, um, uh, next slide please, if there, that there is reason uh, uh, for this AI ethics to be developed, we can see on a daily basis. Uh, we have discussions on deep fakes. So do we want to have deep fakes in our society? It's crucial that we can rely on the trustworthiness of, for instance, pictures or movies. So if this becomes questionable, what does this do with our uh, uh, society. Uh, we had incidents uh, indeed on facial recognitions um, that we know that it, it doesn't perform well with uh, black people and especially not uh, with black female uh, uh, females. Um, we had uh, controversies um, with AI applications that are used to as a recruitment tool, which is super interesting because actually a lot of these recruitment tools are introduced to, to get rid of human bias, but we found that they actually uh, yeah, re-establish uh, uh, biases and are, for, and for instance, uh, discriminate against women. So there is this need to, to, um, to rethink and ensure that we have AI applications that are worth wanting uh, from a societal uh, point of view. So AI ethics is uh, a kind of yeah, how to say it, a kind of development that is taking place. I think five years or so, it's becoming very uh, popular, both in academia as well as in uh, the professional and the public domain. So in academia, uh, ethicists, sociologists are um, focusing on question of as, as, as if, like, what it, does it mean to have responsible AI or what does it mean to have a good explanation? But also in the public and the private domain, um, uh, people are providing uh, and developing um, tools in order to ensure this ethical uh, AI. Uh, next slide, please. So one important um, um, actor in the field, in the public domain, is the high-level expert group on artificial intelligence. So they have published uh, gu ethical guidelines for trustworthy AI. And what they've done, um, so they formulated four uh, ethical principles, of, uh, respect for uh, human autonomy, uh, prevention of harm, uh, fairness and uh, explicability. And based on these four principles, they also developed requirements and they also developed an impact assessment. So all kinds of tools for people in the field, professionals in the field to ensure that their uh, AI application uh, takes into consideration these important values. Next slide, please. But it's not just in the public domain. So also um, the companies that are developing uh, these applications are are thinking about how that how to do this in a, in, in a societal uh, acceptable way. So I could have picked IBM, Microsoft, I picked Google, Google AI. So they formulated seven objectives um, for their AI applications. Uh, for instance, being uh, beneficial, societally beneficial, 
uh, incorporate privacy design principles. And so they use these, the, these company values, so to say, to assess uh, their own uh, activities. Next slide, please. So next to public, private actors, we all also seen academia, but also um, NGOs uh, formulating all sorts of um, guidelines, guidelines and codes of conduct. This is one uh, specifically for data science. And again, we see um, principles such as avoid harm, uh, maintain accountability and oversight and increase trustworthiness. Uh, next slide, slide, please. What's interesting is there was a kind of uh, research into all these new ethical guidelines and uh, principles, and they found three principles that reappear uh, throughout all these um, uh, codes of conduct and, and principles, namely accountability, fairness, and privacy. So these are the three um, focal points uh, currently of AI ethics. And other um, uh, principles that just didn't make it to the top three were justice and uh, explainability, for instance. Um, so if we think about this, what do we what do we think about this actually, right? So is this good? Are we happy that we have all these people, actors engaging in um, uh, making sure that our AI applications are ethically sound? So you might think, yes, this is brilliant, right? We, have, we want to have uh, AI applications that adhere and, and, and represent uh, these uh, principles. However, next slide. There are also some, um, I believe, valid concerns uh, with this approach. And one of the biggest concerns is referred to as ethics washing. So what we do see is that sometimes companies use actually, or better even abuse, these uh, ethics principles to actually circum uh, to, to avoid um, a more stricter stricter regulation, uh, legal regulation, for instance. So they say, well, don't bother regulating us. We have these principles. We, we'll be fine. So we don't need extra regulation. And this is, of course, not um, uh, the goal of um, um, AI ethics. Next slide. And that is, a, this is a valid, that this is a valid concern uh, also uh, follows from research. Uh, recently, there were 160 AI ethics guidelines uh, analyzed, and it turned out that only 10 had proper enforcement mechanisms. So this means that uh, in practice, uh, when there is a nice opportunity um, um, coming up, which might be in conflict with the formulated uh, ethical principles, it's actually quite easy uh, to set aside these principles and go for the, the opportunity, so to say, uh, because there is not a, a, a proper enforcement uh, mechanism. So it's really important to understand that AI ethics is a kind of self-regulatory strategy and it therefore also suffers from these kinds of uh, uh, weaknesses. Next slide. Oh, one slide back, please. Oh, one slide, go. Oh. We're missing one slide. Okay, it doesn't matter. Just let the slide uh, be what it is. And the other um, uh, uh, point of critique is that, uh, as we saw when we looked at these uh, AI ethics principles, they're all rather like high level and abstract. And um, um, what it doesn't really uh, account for is that in real life AI practices, people are taking already responsibility in the sense that um, ethics is not just about big principles, but also about how professionals in their daily lives, in their daily professional lives, already think about um, uh, values and, and ethical issues. And I, I'm, I'm happy to say that, that Chris, who is the next speaker, will actually, is actually an exa moral exemplar of a uh, professional who already shows that there is a lot of um, um, people on the, on the floor who, who actually already take this into account. And this kind of knowledge, this kind of bottom-up ethical knowledge should be more recognized. And this actually brings me to this slide that's on the screen, the value caps. Um, a big question is uh, whose values- You have five are... minutes left, Esther. Perfect. Whose values are we actually embedding? Uh, I, I already heard also in the, in the previous talk, AI for good, uh, but who, who is defining good here? This is so important. So 
we have cultural values. So for instance, uh, the, the European high level expert group obviously represents our European view, but what about the corporate values of Google? They are more um, um, aligned with, with, with the American US based values. Obviously they have capitalistic values. They have, there's a company. And one uh, domain of values or, or, or values that are missing oftentimes are community values, especially the communities that are actually uh, affected by the AI applications. So there is also a call uh, for more participatory um, AI uh, design, where we actually try to already include in the development phase the foreseeable communities that will be affected by uh, the AI applications in order to ensure that also their values are part of the design process. This brings me again to the questions. Uh, question is all lost now for AI ethics. So, so should we then just stop and, and, and do something else? Um, no, I don't think so. I, 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 first of all, I think it's important to understand that although AI ethics is kind of new, um, in practice, companies, researchers, institutions, government agencies always have been uh, engaged in this kinds of uh, decision making and uh, formulating um, these kinds of values and principles, but it was never very open and, 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 and uh, public. So what at least AI ethics brings us is that this discussion now is, is open to more uh, actors. So I think this alone is already very valid. However, um, the, the, the points of critique that I just uh, mentioned are, are also important to, to uh, take into account. So we do need to kind of rethink how we want to take the next step um, when it comes to AI ethics. Next slide, please. Uh, okay, next slide, please. Yes. And um, so within TISIC, we already discuss, uh, our, uh, discuss a holistic approach to, to AI, but also within AI ethics. I think a holistic approach uh, would be um, something to, to work on. So this is the kind of model that I am working on. It has kind of, it has three layers. And um, in order to, I believe to have uh, an AI ethics that is more than just window dressing, we have to look at AI ethics on these three levels. So the first level is a technical level. So this is about which values get embedded and how can we ensure that they are not just the values of those in power, but also of those who are affected by the AI application. And I believe we can only do that by uh, focusing as well on the people who are developing, making uh, these AI applications. And especially for Tilburg, this is super important because we are to a certain extent educating uh, these professionals. So we have to make sure that they not just um, uh, develop their uh, technical skills, but also their technomoral uh, skills and competences. And we do, so that's, that's good. Uh, but we can always do it more. <laughs> and finally, to ensure that it's not just uh, lip service AI ethics, we also have to include the checks and balances on the organizational level. So we need to make sure that there are proper enforcement um, mechanisms being developed to ensure that throughout the whole process of the AI development, um, uh, these values are embedded. So to stress, this is really not a pick and choose model. So you really have to uh, take into account all three levels in order- One minute to go, Esther. In order to uh, develop a holistic approach to AI ethics. And I believe this could be a way to ensure that AI ethics is more than just lip service. Next slide, please. Thank you for your attention. And this is the literature if you would like to look into that. <laughs>